Coming up next, two sailors accused of selling Navy secrets to China appear in federal court. Warning from CAL FIRE to drone operators not to fly over wildfires because of the danger it poses to their aircraft. COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations are up across the country and our region. What's causing the latest spike? How you could shop smart and save during back-to-school shopping. And a problem they couldn't flush away, where a couple found an iguana in their toilet. CBS 8 News, Alive at 6, starts now. Two sailors arrested for selling Navy secrets to China have been ordered held without bond as the espionage and bribery cases move forward. Good evening, I'm Jesse Pagan in for Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. One of those sailors was based here in San Diego, the other in Ventura County. As CBS 8's David Gomperson reports, both defendants appeared in federal court today for bail hearings. The judge ordered 22-year-old Patrick Way held without bail Tuesday after his defense attorney stipulated to a no-bail hold during a hearing in downtown federal court. Way faces life in prison if convicted of espionage charges related to selling military secrets to a Chinese intelligence officer, including records detailing weapons on his ship, the USS Essex. In court Tuesday, the prosecutor said the Navy machinist was a danger to the community and a flight risk, arguing Wei's only relative in the United States is his mother, who told her son he could move to China and work for the communist government. The prosecutor said Wei put thousands of sailors at risk by selling to China sensitive details of Navy ship positions and movements. Last week, San Diego U.S. Attorney Randy Grossman announced the indictment against the Chinese native. Wei provided China with photographs of military hardware, including guns, vehicles, and planes. He delivered information about U.S. Marines involved in an upcoming international maritime warfare exercise. And he sold scores of technical and mechanical manuals related to the operation and power structures of amphibious assault ships. Prosecutors allege Wei was paid between $10,000 and $15,000 over the past year, and a Chinese handler reimbursed him for purchases of a computer and a cell phone. Whether it was greed or for some other reason, Wei allegedly chose to turn his back on his newly adopted country and enter a conspiracy with his Chinese handler. Another sailor, Thomas Zhao, appeared in federal court in Los Angeles Tuesday. The 26-year-old also was ordered held without bail on charges of bribery and conspiracy in a similar scheme with a Chinese intelligence officer, prosecutors allege. Zhao is accused of collecting $15,000 in bribes while he was working on naval base Ventura County. The San Diego sailor will be back in court again for a hearing on August 21st. At the downtown federal courthouse, David Gottfriedson, CBS 8. We have breaking news tonight. A major crash on San Pasqual Valley Road. This is near the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. It happened just after four this afternoon. Firefighters rescued six people trapped inside the wreckage of a pickup truck and sedan that crashed. One person was airlifted to the hospital. All six people suffered major trauma, but San Diego Fire Rescue hasn't revealed the exact extent of their injuries. The cause of the crash is under investigation. A chance of rain has been in the forecast for this week and parts of the county saw some this afternoon. Now, the question now is, is there more to come later in the week? Meteorologist Sean Stiles here early with a first look at your microclimate forecast, Sean. Were you guys out in it today? Uh, there was water falling from I the was, sky, Sean. I, I was know. walking and big, thing, big drops. So those <laughs> were big tropical drops that were coming down. As we take a look at this uh, rain, this was shot by photographers Chief Photographer Kenny McGregor and Photographer uh, Anne-Marie Spaulding as they were out on the roads today. Uh, not enough to make the roads wet or slick, but certainly enough to turn on the windshield wipers. And as you heard there, enough to really kind of hit the windshield with some force out there. As you look at this Doppler radar, you can see what I'm talking about. The rain still falling across parts of the county right now, and it is exiting to the north and east of us. The heaviest rain came down mid-morning into the early afternoon afternoon. Uh, we do have a pretty good return moving into Orange County. Uh, as far as temperatures with all that moist air came 
warm tropical air along with it. So our high was 83. That's well above our average by six degrees. And for you folks over the next uh, three to four days here along the coastline, your temperatures are actually going to go below average as we get into Thursday and Friday. Uh, it looks like the chance of precipitation might stick around a little bit tomorrow and linger into Thursday. But after that, we start to dry out. And in fact, by the weekend, things look rather pleasant with temperatures starting to rise, but the atmosphere much, much drier. I'll explain why in just a bit. Sounds like a great weekend coming our way. Thanks, Sean. The San Diego Police and Crime Stoppers need your help to catch a man. They say tried to rob, then set fire to a business near the border. These are surveillance images from a money exchange in San Isidro. Police say on Tuesday, July 18th, the man you see here tried to rob the business. When he was not able to carry out the robbery, he then started a fire inside that business. Anyone with information should call San Diego Police or Crime Stoppers at 888-580-8477. Crime Stoppers is offering a $1,000 reward for any information that leads to an arrest. As brush fires keep firefighters busy across Southern California, Cal Fire and other agencies have a message tonight for drone operators. They are warning them not to interfere with firefighting operations. CBS 8's Brian White is live at Cal Fire headquarters tonight to explain why this is such a big deal. Brian. That's right, CAL FIRE reiterating that message, warning of the dangers that drones can present not only to firefighting aircraft, but to their ability to knock down a fire in those first crucial minutes before it gets out of control. It might be good to get that, that video and that, that content for social media, but it's very dangerous and it's illegal, so we ask that you don't do that. CAL FIRE warning of the dangers to firefighters in the air and on the ground because drone operators are not coordinated underneath the air tactical supervisor who's in charge of the airspace. The airplanes and uh, the, the tankers, they can be as low as 150 feet when they're dropping their water and retardant, and that's about the uh, height that the hobbyists uh, like to fly at. Dispatch to the 306. Fire Captain Michael Cornett with Cal Fire San Diego stressing the risk involved when a drone gets too close to aircraft. Well, it's just like a, a bird strike. It, it's, it's something, it's a foreign object that it could uh, it affect the rotors or the propellers or uh, the wings of any of the firefighting aircraft and uh, could be dangerous. If and when a drone is spotted near a fire, CAL FIRE and other agencies are required to ground all aircraft and suspend their air attack on the fire. Which is very dangerous because of helicopters and the aircraft. They're most effective in that initial initial part of the fire and keeping things small and keeping that, that fire in check so the firefighters can get on the ground and cut around it and put their hoses down. Just last week, a small vegetation fire broke out on the side of the 15 freeway south of Deer Springs Road and a drone in the air caused firefighters to halt air operations. Firefighters got on scene, noticed the drone. They uh, halted the air assault until the, that, that drone could get out of the way and then we could uh, resume with our helicopters and air tankers. And the small brush fire was contained to one acre, but CAL FIRE is reminding us that any small fire can easily get out of control during those first few minutes, so their air attack is very important. The slogan that we use is, if you fly, we can't, so best just to stay out of the way and uh, let the aircraft do their job. Yeah, if you fly, we can't. That is a slogan, and obviously we never want to see firefighters have to ground their aircraft and delay those critical water drops. Now, Brian, we've just learned, obviously, it can be dangerous, it's illegal, but are there any penalties for someone whose drone gets in the way of the firefighting crews? Yeah, Jesse, it's a federal crime punishable by up to a year in prison, and the FAA can impose a fine of up to $20,000 against any drone pilot who interferes with emergency fire operations. All right, Brian White reporting live for us tonight. Brian, thank you. The San Diego County region is seeing a spike in COVID cases. Hospitalizations are still considered low, but are steadily rising. It's part of a similar trend happening across the state and country. It's not just nationwide. Recent data shows COVID hospitalizations are up in our region as well. And although it's not yet clear what's causing cases to go up, experts believe there are a number of different factors at play. When hospital admissions are higher, 
That's, of course, concerning. San Diego County is seeing a spike in COVID cases. Hospitalizations are still considered low, but are steadily rising. It's part of a similar trend happening across the state and country. We are seeing an increase in hospitalizations. It is a slight increase. We do have a lot of hospital capacity. We have a lot of ICU capacity. Family medicine specialist at Sharp Reese Steely, Dr. Abizola Lulade, says case counts typically go up during the summertime. Yeah. I asked her what's the driving force behind the current spread. People are gathering, so we're seeing record number of people traveling, and so that's, of course, going to lead to people at transportation hubs, and that's going to increase cases. People are going to see Barbaheim, Mm -hmm. and they're going to concerts and they're doing it without masks. Another possible contributing factor, the Omicron variant continues to evolve, making it easier to spread. All of these things do combine. Nationwide, a new subvariant of Omicron called Iris is now the dominant strain. There's no current evidence that it's in San Diego County, but experts do expect it to be here as cases spread. Olulani says although the new subvariant can lead to more severe cases, vaccines will still protect you. The FDA did authorize a new shot, but it hasn't been made available yet. I asked Dr. Olulani which vaccine is better. The best COVID vaccine is the one that's available to you. That means if you're not up to date with your COVID shot or booster, you should make an appointment soon. The latest FDA-approved vaccine is expected to become available sometime in mid to late September. And for extra protection, consider wearing a mask. You can find N95 masks available to order on Amazon. Prices range between $10 to $25. For more information about vaccines, appointments, and masks, visit CBS8.com. Garcia de la Fe, CBS8, working for you. Tonight, the San Diego County Sheriff's Search and Rescue K-9 Unit is celebrating a new graduate. This is Albert, and he's the department's first bloodhound. He passed all his classes and is now officially certified. It took months of extensive training with his handler to get to this point. CBS 8 has been there from the start. Here's one of his first sessions. Albert's just a puppy with floppy ears, having some trouble during the early days, but now he's ready and even has his own San Diego County Sheriff's Department ID card. How exciting was that after so many months of training to finally be able to have him certified? It, it was pretty exciting, yeah. Uh, it was a lot of work, uh, pretty intense training that I took him to. So it was a relief and a joy to be able to bring that back to the department. The department will use Albert's skills mainly to help find missing hikers. Still ahead, how local high school students are using artificial intelligence to track body movements and detect disease. Plus, if you're feeling lucky, you're running out of time to head to the store. A one and a half billion dollar Mega Millions jackpot is up for grabs tonight. And up next, another strike. We'll tell you where city workers in Southern California have walked off the job.